Hi, I'm Michelle Fox, and we're going to talk about your online Mary Kay business. I know that you've created that Facebook group for your VIPs and possibly even a business page, and you're wondering, why isn't my business growing? What am I doing wrong? Let's talk about it. Before we get started, I wanna thank all of my new subscribers. I have been so excited to read your comments on my most recent videos. And I also see a big interest in more Mary Kay training. I have a link in the description of this video. And if you click that, it, you will have the opportunity to add your email list to my email mailing list. And in that way, I will be able to keep you up to date on what I am doing in the the future. I hope to have some webinars and also some um, individualized consultant opportunities, um, a, a chance for us to actually talk one-on-one -on -one about your business, where you're at, what your goals are, so that I can help even more. Training is really my passion. And so um, if you would like to learn, I would love to teach. <laughs> so let's talk about what is going on with your online Mary Kay business? And this can be for someone who is brand new, or it can be for those of us that have been around for a long, long time, and we are trying to acclimate to the new digital community, the new digital atmosphere. It seems like the pattern is that we create a group on Facebook for our VIPs, for our preferred customers, and we do whatever we can think of to funnel people in there and then we inundate them with pictures of products and give them all kinds of information and when that doesn't work we create sales and discounts and when that doesn't work we come up with hostess programs and when that doesn't work we come up with even more outrageous hostess programs giving away more and more and more free products and then we start posting, offering half price saying, join my team and you can shop at 50% off. And then we're thinking, gosh, you know, what else can I possibly do to get these people excited? They're not reading my posts. They're not buying anything. They're not booking. What, what is going on? And I would like us to think back to the principles that Mary Kay founded the company on. Think about how we run our face-to-face -face business and then sort of shine that light on what's going on with our online business. And I think it's going to expose exactly what, what's wrong. Mary Kay really focused on the relationship between you and your customer or potential customer. She focused on letting that person know uh, that you are thinking about her and not just the sale that you're she just you don't want her to see dollar signs in your eyes but you want to actually see that necklace that she's wearing that says what's in it for me make me feel important that when you are sitting down across from her that you are eye to eye heart to heart knee to knee all of those beautiful sayings totally focused on her issues, her needs, her wants, that you are her personal beauty consultant, that you give her an opportunity to try the products, that you keep those products that you know she loves on your shelf so that they are available to her when she needs it, that you offer the 100% satisfaction guarantee that she hopefully loves the skincare and understands that that is the foundation of everything, that that is the, you know, the most important product purchase that she can make, that after she is in love with the products, that she becomes a hostess for you. And as she watches how you make money, that you share with her the opportunity. And if she's going to become a team member, that that is after she has already loved the products, purchased the products and watched you make money so that she's already understanding how the procedure works, that it is important for people to try the product, love the product, make a purchase, that you ideally book her as a hostess, make money that way, and then if she's going to become a team member, that that happens at that point, and on and on. And 
So let's think about uh, the group that you made. When you are putting people in your group, are you vetting them? Are you making sure that they aren't already someone else's customer? Are you personally inviting them like in a meaningful way where they feel honored that you've invited them to this group? Or is it some kind of huge blanket invitation? Are you giving them an opportunity to try the products? Are you showing them the benefits of the products so that they fall in love with the products? Are you taking them down that path where they try the product, buy the product, have their friends try it before they ever hear the marketing plan? Likely the answer is no, because we fall into that trap of just doing everything en masse, where we invite every person, all of our friends to join the group. And then when we get the group there, we invite all of those women to be a hostess for us. And think about how you feel when you are asked to be, well, for anything, and you can just tell that it's part of a mass invite. It doesn't feel special. It doesn't feel like anything that you even feel like you need to reply to because you can just tell that you are one of a bajillion people that were invited to that such and such party. So let's flip it. So what could you do to make that community feel more like it is a selected, uh, exclusive community that you hand chose them and that it is a privilege to be part of that community. Well, first of all, you need to think of it that way. And as you invite them, it needs to be an individual invitation. One way would be through messenger or text, and you could have the body of the invitation be the same, you know, copy paste, but the beginning of it or the, the hook needs to be individualized. And is that going to take time? Yes. But is it worth it? Yes. Okay. So for example, you might say something like, Hey, Judy, I have uh, started a beauty community and every day I give tips and tricks and you came to mind because I know you love to watch YouTube tutorials. Hey, Martha, I just started this community of women where I post daily how-tos on skincare and wellness, and you came to mind because I know that you are all about investing in anti-aging everything. Hey, Susan, I um, just started this group of women. It's a free community for anyone interested in um, makeup tutorials or beauty tips and you popped into my head because I know how much you love anything to do with eye makeup. Okay, so you are put, you're spinning it differently where you are saying, I thought of you for a reason and I'm offering you to be part of this community where I offer free tips, where I offer instruction, where I offer positive thoughts, community, friendships, and opportunities to interact with other women. And you want to actually make that community be like that. So you want to make sure that the community that you are creating there, that you are thinking, what are you offering for those women? Is it just about you? Is it just a forum for you to post, buy my product, buy my product, buy my product? Or are you sharing your knowledge and wisdom and information? And if you feel like, well, I don't know anything yet, I just signed up. Well, you have ways to learn things, okay? You could just take a moment and go to Mary Kay in touch, learn a little nugget of something and then go back on your group and share it. So for example, you go and you learn how to apply lip liner and then you go to your group page and you do a super short 
tutorial, just doing a video using your phone of how to apply lip liner or how to choose the color or why do you use a nude versus a, a, a color color or, or what have you. But if, um, if all it is, is just you taking, buy my stuff, book a party, join my team, why would someone want to be there, all right? Because we're already pulled in so many directions. We are already, so many people are taking from us that we are much more likely to want to hang out in an environment where we are being ministered to, where we are receiving, where we are getting something. Things that you can offer would even be um, charts like uh, uh, like the skincare chart, like the order of application chart. You could post that. The different beauty looks where there's like the pinks and mauves look. You could just post that and say, you know, these, these colors go together well. Isn't this beautiful? You could do a poll, like which, which one is your favorite and show like maybe three different sets of eye colors, neutrals, blues, and, and purples or something. And just to, women love to give their opinion. They love to vote. They love to, um, answer questions. So you could say who washes their face, you know, morning and night, you know, be honest or, or something, you know, who washes morning only, night only, morning and night, never. <laughs> and uh, to get some interaction. If you are going to offer, um, you know, if you're willing to offer a discount or a freebie, you know, a buy one, get one, Think of it like this. Why don't you just offer that for engagement from the audience? So instead of offering like a discount on a purchase, why don't you have a win it Wednesday where you come up with some kind of game or something that they can do that is fun and you have a giveaway and it doesn't have to be a full price Mary Kay product. It can even be a little pouch that you get at the dollar store and you just call it a makeup bag, okay? I buy a lot of the um, pencil pouches when they're 75% off after the school, you know, rush. And they're, they are basically makeup bags. And, you know, I buy them if they're soft colors or they're just, you know, cute. And you know, I, I promote them as free makeup bags. So a one at Wednesday could be, you know, name this lipstick and you just show a red lipstick and then that's a competition. Everybody posts, you know, what they, what they would call it. And then you could create a poll and everybody votes on what they think is their, you know, favorite name. Offer birthday, either discounts or a birthday gift. So um, happy January birthday. Who are my January birthday girls? Comment below you know, what day you were born, don't need to know the year, LOL. And just to get them, you know, saying things and interacting and then send them a private message saying, happy birthday, thank you for responding. I offer 10% off during your birthday month and I'll also include a little something just from me to you. That's going to encourage her to place an order because she's going to be curious about what that little something is. And it could just be like a little tiny hand cream or something. But do you see the difference between going to a group where there might be like positive, um, maybe every morning you post, you know, a positive thought and um, on Wednesday, you've got a win it Wednesday and once a month, you've got some kind of other giveaway and you're doing the birthday specials and there's, a, you've got the, um, order of application chart and pretty um, different eye palettes and stuff saying, hey, what, what should we call this eye palette? You know, I just, I just put these four together. What would you call it? You're not asking for a sale. You're just saying, you know, what, what would you call it? It's like a fun, interactive opportunity for girls to be girls. It's a totally different vibe than posting you know, buy three, get one half price eye colors. You know, you, it would be the same picture, 
you know, let's say you've got a picture of, of four eye colors in the petite palette. This one is buy three, get one half price eye color. This one is, hey, what would you call these four eye colors? What would you name this palette? I guarantee that you will get more sales from this one <laughs> than this one because it's non-threatening. Women love to shop, but they hate being sold to. Wrap your head around that. We love to shop, but we hate being sold to. Give me a chance to look at it on my own. Give me a chance to shop on my own, make my own decision, and I will probably buy something from you. But if you're cramming it down my throat, I probably won't. All right? So there's a difference there. Some other things that you can do to make uh, the members, once they do join your, your group, to to have that be more of a relationship is to do do some work. Uh, make sure that you are liking and commenting their posts. You want to make sure that you are, if they're not already your Facebook friend, friend, request them. All right, back it up. So you see that somebody joins your group. If they're not already your friend, you immediately send them a friend request. You send them a private message thanking them for joining your group, asking if they would like a sample you know, sent to them or if there's any other way you could serve them. Uh, there are so many things that you could do at that point. You know, ask them if they've ever tried Mary Kay before. It all depends on if you've already, if you were the one that invited them or if somebody else invited them. You know, we can we can talk about that all day. But the point is, you want to acknowledge that they joined the group, and make sure that they are now your Facebook friend, so that in the morning when you're looking through your feed, that if they are posting an adorable picture of their puppy or their kid or their grandpa, that you are liking and commenting so that they are feeling that warm fuzzy toward you like, she's my friend. We are connecting. It's more than just me buying her stuff, but now I'm part of a group that is a community where I'm learning and I'm having fun and I'm winning prizes. I'm meeting new women. And this woman who's in charge of this community likes my cat. <laughs> And she knows when it's my birthday, <clears throat> send birthday wishes, pay attention to that. Look at the upper right corner of the, uh, your Facebook notifications. And when you see that it's one of your customers or group members birthday, wish them a happy birthday. Little things like that are really, really important. Are you asking for a sale? No, you are creating a relationship. The, the trust factor, the like trust factor is so important when it's an online sales relationship because you aren't in each other's presence. So yes, you can have customers all over the United States, but that person that's several states away from you that has never laid eyes on you and probably never will, it's really important then that she feels that she's more to you than just a sale. So you need to go out of your way to make that a reality. And women know if, if you're genuine or not, even, even when it's online. And uh, so that's the proof is in the pudding. So when you feel like, um, you know, I don't want to be salesy or spammy and I don't want to be fake and I don't want to just friend them just so that they'll buy my stuff. Well, then don't, you know, I like for me, I enjoy making more friends, meeting more people. I, of course, want to grow my business, but uh, it's not just about that. Like I love to learn about other people. I love to hear about their experiences and I invite them to join my group. Not all of them purchase products from me ever. You know, some will come and join my group and just kind of observe and I've even had some of them win like the weekly prizes and have never purchased a darn thing. But they are an active member of my group and I'm rewarding them for being part, a vital part of my community there. To me, that's important. And do I think that someday they'll buy something? I think they probably will. But whether they do or they don't is, is not as important as the fact that I'm creating a sense of community. So is any of that, 
you know, resonating. I think also, uh, going back to the opportunity for women to try before they buy. When we're working our business in person, uh, we sit down with them either one-on-one -on -one or in a party, or rarely we would mail them a sample. Like most of the time we have the demonstration like in person, right? And that's why in our starter kit, we don't get a bajillion samples. We get like the full size products because we're squirting into their trays. So think of it like this. You've got all of your people in your group. They have not tried the product yet, many of them. Could you send out samples? Yes, I'll warn you, it, that is expensive. To buy samples for a whole bunch of people, get the padded envelopes, pay for the stamps and all of that, send that out with no idea if they're going to try it or not, or if they're going to respond or not. That's risky business. But I can tell you what you will get a really good response from is if you put the product on your face and let them watch and you talk about the benefits. So for example, you go live. I know that sounds scary. Once you've done it a couple of times, it's really not. It really and truly is not. And you can use your phone. It's a matter of just clicking go live. Just instead of uh, clicking comment, you click go live. And, you know, get a little tripod or something. And you put on the charcoal mask while you're talking. And then you get real close to the camera and let them see how it's got the little dark dots and then some of the ashy colored dots and talk about what's happening and what it smells like and what it feels like and then get your washcloth and show them how easily it comes off and just say you know how great your face feels and that it's one of your favorite products and and that's it and you would be amazed at how many people will watch that and will contact you afterward and ask questions about it and you can even follow up that video with Hey, if you think that this looks like as much fun as it is, I'll send you a free sample. Just comment right here that, you know, send me a free sample and I will get in touch with you. That is a sample that I would be willing to send out because they've watched, they've engaged, they have said, I want that. They, they know what it is and they've, they've made an effort to say that they want it. I'll send them a sample, okay, as opposed to just sending out samples to random people that, you know, I have no idea if they're going to try it or not. So, you know, start thinking in terms of does my online business parallel what my in-person business did or does or should <laughs> look like? Is it a relationship? Is it individualized? Am I allowing them to try before they buy? Am I providing stellar customer service? Am I making them feel important? Am I showing them what's in it for them? Am I taking them down the course, you know, down the path in the right order where they try, then they buy, then they invite their friends to try. And then at some point I talk to them about the opportunity. All of those things are, are in that done that way for a reason and that's why our company stays strong all these years later because of those fundamental principles and whether we are working our biz online or in person those principles need to be in place and I think that when our online business is struggling we just need to ask ourselves is is our business like, like, what would Mary Kay think of how my my business page is set up or how my, my VIP group is set up? What would she think about that? Or would she think about what I'm posting or what I'm offering or what I'm saying in my posts? And here's another thing to think about. Sales has changed over the years in that the consumer has become a little more savvy and a little more skeptical and they want to understand the benefits they want to see the benefits they want to almost watch it happen in front of their very eyes as opposed to 
just hearing all of the facts. There may have been a time when all they needed to know was, you know, have like an authority figure show them the beautiful packaging and say, you know, this has A, B, and C in it, and you need that, and it's this much money, and, you know, here you go. That may have worked at one point, but it doesn't work today. What does work is when you say, you know, have you got an issue with your eye makeup um, getting all smeary underneath your eyes like I do? Um, gosh, no matter what product I use by about, you know noon, I've got my eyeliner is is you know running and my mascara has flaked and I've got more underneath my eye than I have on my eye. Can you relate? And, you know, your audience is like thinking, oh, I can totally relate. And then you say, well, that totally stopped when I started using eye primer and start talking about eye primer or when I started using, you know, such and such a mascara or when I realized that I needed to let my um, eye cream dry before I put on my makeup you're talking to your audience about a personal experience and explaining that I had this problem, I fixed it by doing this, and then they're having that aha moment. That is much more meaningful to today's audience than, you know, this has A, B, and C ingredients, and you will love it too. It's just a different day as far as that goes. So my point with that is, that as beautiful as the posts are that we can get like on Hootsuite or, you know, the digital library, um, they, they, there's a time and a place for them. But I think that either in addition to or sometimes even instead of, it's even more effective to just have plain old, you know, pictures of yourself using the product or short video clips or to make something in Canva of your own where you are showing, showcasing, explaining the benefits of that product, how it solved a problem for you, how it can solve a problem for them, how it can meet a need. What does it do? What does it do? Like, why is it great? Why do you love it? Why can you not live without it? Those are the kinds of things that catch people's attention as opposed to just facts. When you find yourself listing, you know, prices and, and ingredients and things like that, not that that's wrong, but it's dull, okay? And when people are just seeing uh, sort of like factory pictures, you know, like, like this, they may be beautiful, but it's not, it doesn't feel real. It doesn't, it doesn't connect like something like a picture of you with your crazy charcoal mask face. <laughs> so uh, think of someone that is successful with their online business and look at that person's posts and see if they are using exclusively the posts provided from Mary Kay without, you know, adding anything personalized or if they're posting things, their own pictures of themselves or things maybe that they created in Canva or testimonials, because I would imagine that you're going to see more of that because that's what people relate to. So I hope I've given you some, some food for thought there. And, uh, as far as like the order of things overall, when it comes to to my online success with my business, how it has worked for me, and this I'm, I'm wrapping it up because we'll probably talk more about this, what I'm going to say right now in a future video, but just in general, the, the flow for me has been that on my, my personal page, my personal Facebook wall, I have reintroduced myself instead of as a, a Mary Kay consultant, more as a beauty professional, as like a, um, a beauty and skincare expert. And 
I will occasionally post things like tips and tricks and that kind of thing, or I'll post uh, when I have like a new um, YouTube video or something that, that the general public might be interested in that is like a, a skincare type thing, uh, just to kind of let my friends know that that this is what I do, but I'm not cramming it down their throat. You see what I mean? And then once in a blue moon, I might post like a before and after, like when I started using retinol, I posted like, holy smokes, you know, can you even believe the difference between week one and week eight? I didn't think I needed it, but boy, did I. And just, you know, leave it like that. And then just scads of people commented on that, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And then those that said, like, what did you use? Those were the people that I sent a private message to and said, well, you know, I, I use this fantastic retinol set, you know, would you like some more information? You know, even then I didn't just give them all the info right off the bat. I, I'm like, you know, I did use, a, I used something in particular. Are you sure you want to know about it? I kind of like pulled them along. Uh, so on my personal page, personal wall, it's like, I, I'm just kind of cracking the door open a little bit, letting them know that I do beauty and skincare. I don't cram it down their throat. I don't use the Mary Kay logo or any Mary Kay references specifically. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not embarrassed of it. I just want there to be a little bit of mystery. And I don't ever want anybody to say or feel that I'm, I'm spamming them, okay? Then I've got my Mary Kay business page where as my friends on my personal wall, as that has grown, because I'm constantly friend requesting people almost on the daily, that's, that's something to do. Send birthday messages, friend request people, like and comment on people's posts, be friendly on Facebook, okay? Communicate with people on Facebook. Build up your friend base. As that gets bigger and bigger and bigger, I see people that I think, I'm going to um, ask her to like my business page, okay? And then I do have a Michelle Fox Beauty business page. And so then I'll select certain people that I think I've warmed up to, that I've known long enough, that maybe they've commented on some of my posts that are specifically about skincare and beauty. And so then they will like my business page. Well, then once they've liked it, they have the option of following it. If they're following it, then they're going to see um, some of my live videos. And on my business page, even there, I try not to be terrifically spammy, product price oriented. I try to be more helpful. I think of it as like a resource page where I talk about, you know, what is retinol? What is the difference between this and that? Um, you know, what are active ingredients? Uh, how do you apply three different eye colors? Or what's the, what do you need to be aware of with different eye shapes? And uh, so my beauty page is a beauty resource. It's a reference point for people. Again, I'm not hiding the fact that I'm a Mary Kay person, but I'm not cramming it down their throat, okay? And then once they've been introduced to my beauty page for a while, uh, in several places, and especially when I'm live, I invite them to be part of my community of beauty lovers, which is where my preferred customers are. So that is my private group. So the progression went from you know, friend requesting them so that they're part of my, you know, personal wall. And then as I feel that relationship warm up, I ask them to like and follow my business page. And even there, um, I'm not super um, uh, big into, you know, the, the, you know, the Mary Kay name and logo. I'm pretty much just trying to be a helpful resource there. And as they interact there and watch my live videos and I see that they have indeed liked and followed, they are invited to join my preferred customer group, which is a private group. In order to join that group, they have to answer a few questions and there's also something they can click to get a free gift when they join. 
And part of that includes, you know, a questionnaire, you know, have they ever used Mary Kay? Do they have a Mary Kay consultant and all of that so that I can vet them in that way. So for me, that has been a really nice progression so that by the time they're in my VIP group, they have, you know, sort of gone down that path where they've gotten to know me, they've, they've liked me, they've learned to trust me, and I've had an opportunity to make sure that they, you know, that they don't already have a consultant or if they do, that they understand that they can join my group for the community and the tips and all that, but that they would make purchases from their consultant, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, you know, that has worked really well for me. But we will continue to talk about how did I set that up? How, how do you put questions in there before they answer? How do you get, you know, how do you make that happen? That's stuff that I enjoyed learning and I would love to teach you. So we will keep talking about that. But hopefully I've given you a few things to think about and I would love to hear your comments. If you have specific things that I hit on but didn't elaborate enough, let me know and we can do a whole video on it. But for sure in the future, we will talk about what's the difference between my business page and my VIP personal group and how do I get that information and those questions and all that on my VIP group? You know, what did I do to set that up? So those will be future videos so you can keep your eyes peeled for that. So if you are watching for the first time, please like this video and subscribe. And like I mentioned at the beginning, there will be a link in the description that you can click to get on my email mailing list so that we can stay in the loop together. And I'll let you know about future wonderful things that are happening. Thanks so much for watching.